you. Clap your hands for the kids. Thank you very much. Because we Jesus, Lord, as about to give you our worship, Lord Jesus, Lord, 
Father, let us have that hunger and that thirst for you, Lord Jesus, because we know that you are God alone, Lord Jesus, Lord. Father, I pray that your anointing may flow through our worship today, Lord Jesus, Lord, and the rest of our service, and everyone says, Amen. Please remain standing. Who's ready to give praise to our Lord Jesus Christ? Woo! Um, last night, um, um, Jake as well, youth attended a um, uh, worship explosion. Wasn't it a best, a blessing? Woo! Woo! Through the worship and everything and what caught my attention through the preaching or says, it depends on you and I for our worship. You know, it depends. You know, whatever you go through in life or anything, God says to be still. Amen? Amen. You know, let us have that heart of worship. If you're new to this, you know, this is our one-on-one time with our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Feel free to dance and clap. And the first song that we sing is My Savior. Feel free to clap your hands and just give praise to our Lord Jesus Christ because He Amen. deserves it. Amen? Amen.
turn into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you Not like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you
the end of our worship, Lord Jesus, Father. We give you back everything unto you, Lord Jesus, because you deserve it all. Father, Lord Jesus, Lord, for our worship, Lord Jesus, Father. Let us still remain with that hunger and that thirst for you, Lord Jesus, because we know that you are God, Lord Jesus. You're the Alpha and the Omega, Lord Jesus, beginning at the end, Lord God. Father, I pray that we may give our needs and wants unto you, Lord Jesus, Lord. Provide unto your church today, Lord Jesus, Lord Father. Father, for the rest of our service, Lord, let the preaching remain in our hearts, Lord Jesus, that it may be a blessing into our individual lives, Lord Jesus, Lord. Father, we give you back all the glory and the praise. And everyone says, Amen. Amen. Please remain standing and just greet your brothers and sisters and say, It's good to see you in the house of the Lord. Oh, I'm gonna run with fire.
But today, I was also would like to invite um, Pastor Kevin and um, also uh, Pastor Nikki, please, to come forward as we are going to bless Mighty Richard, Buchanan, J. Jonah, Hermasi, Venice, or Bricks, Yamatua today. Amen. I love that name. I'm going to keep repeating it because he's, he, he's a part of Jacob's well. Amen. And I have to remember all his name. So today I'm going to give you an honor to bless him. Amen. Do you need the names? <laughs> Lord God, we thank you today that children are a blessing for you. But Lord, parents have a responsibility in looking after these children, Father. So Lord, what I pray for is that both of these parents would have wisdom. And Lord, that you would grant them such wisdom, that you would grant them Christ-like compassion. And Father, that you would give them tolerance, Father God. And their lives, oh God, would be a role model unto this child, Father. And as they see this child, Father God, they would see the blessing of Jesus. And they would see themselves in the, as children in the arms of Jesus, Lord. And we thank you, Lord God, that this child, Father, will grow up in the ways of the Lord. That this child, God, will be filled with the presence of the Lord. That this child, Father God, will will have an anointing upon its life. Yes. That when these parents need counsel, yes. that where they will need wisdom, they will look at this child and they will see the love of God in this child yes. and their childlike faith, Father God. Yes. Lord, we dedicate this child to the work yes. of the Lord, Father. Yes. We dedicate this child and we ask you, Lord, to keep your hands upon it, to keep it safe. To keep it from falling into the snares of society. We pray God that these parents, Father God, would be the protector of their children. As God is their protector, Father God. That Lord, that as they, Father God, see God as their protector, they would protect this child, Father God. And Lord, we thank you for a closer connection in this family through this child. We thank you that the cycle is completed, Father God. And Lord, that their lives, Father God, will be role models, Father God. As mother and father, yes, Lord, you have a call and a plan upon their life today. So, Lord, we just say thank you, Father. It is done in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's a step forward. One step forward. Yes. Not only for Haiti, but as for his parents as well. Hallelujah. Amen. As a body of Christ, as a family in Christ, as a church, it's also our responsibilities to pray for them, to encourage them, to walk side by side with them, and also to help them protect and look after their son. And it's our responsibilities as well to look after this family. Keep them in your prayers yes, is what we have done to amen. many other families um, yes. in Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. Okay, I'm not going to take too much of your time. I would like, please, to welcome Pastor <coughs> Kevin Riley to speak to us today. Bless you, amen. amen. Let's put down my water. Amen. It's good to be in the presence of the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. As we were praising God there this morning, the Lord said to me, time is short. Amen. The coming Amen. of these days yes. are closer than we think. God says we need to have our hearts prepared yes. in the fullness of His Word. Hallelujah. We need to be living lives worthy of the calling. We need to be submitted to Him in such a way that if He came, we are ready. We need to be submitted in such a way that every day, that whatever we do, we bring in glory and honor to the name of Jesus. For the Lord says, in the midst of the world at this time, the challenges... The things that he said in terms of 
disasters, earthquakes, famines, devastations, they are going to increase. Amen. And you who know him should not fear, for these are the signs that your father is coming home. And you should be driven to your knees more than ever before in this time, thanking God for the call of God upon your life to serve a purpose in this earth that many shall come to know the fullness of God in a dying world at this time. For the Lord would say that upon this nation in this time, His call and His plan is here. But this nation is going through trials and tribulations. And God would say that the success of this nation in this time of elections is going to be the church of God praying. The church of Jesus Christ seeking His face. The church of Jesus, the church of Jesus Christ taking its rightful place in this nation because when the church takes its rightful place and stands in righteousness, the government will change, the nation will change and the legislation will change because there is no other way that change is going to come except through the righteousness of God. Amen. But as you look at this point in time, as you look at the Middle East, the fires are going to get worse. America is going to go into a time of great crisis in the next six months. Europe is going to rise up in fullness of the EEC and the power and the, and, and, and the power of Babylon is going to come out. And that head is going to come out. And God would say that China is going to rise up in power in a greater fullness. And they are going to begin to filtrate the world with systems and ways. Because they shall rise as the next powerhouse and supergiant in the days ahead. So the Lord would say that in the midst of these storms, you need to prepare yourself. For the coming of the Lord is at hand. And the Lord would say to you today, that where you see the church of Jesus Christ and the hearts of many growing, they don't want to know the truth and want to hear words that please their soul. This is also a marked time saying that he's coming at hand. Amen. But you who know him, stay true to the gospel. Stay true to, stay true to the call of God. Amen. For that is where you shall find your hope. Amen. And that is where you shall find your strength. Do not be deceived by the promises of man. Do not be deceived by the promises of great wealth. Do not be led astray by these things. But be led by the Spirit of God to live lives of holiness and integrity in the season, says the Lord. For there shall come a time where God says, I will restore my order upon this earth. And there will come a time that in the midst of these days, there shall be an outpouring of my spirit, as the word says the Lord. And there shall be revival, say the Lord. But the revival that comes, say the Lord, is not to put Christians in a good, in a good economic associate for them to enjoy life. But it's to pull them through a time of great tribulation. And for their lives to be vessels of revival and truth in this hour, says the Lord. But God says, do not be deceived. By false teaching. That all is good. All is well. And if you do this and you do that. It shall be so. But God says know the spirit of God. Know the voice of the Lord. And know the ways of the Lord in this hour. Amen. Says the Lord. Amen. Amen. Can you stand up please pastor. Lift up your hands. Father. Fill this man with your comfort today. Fill his life with your presence. Let him not be discouraged, O oh Lord, but let him be encouraged. For the Lord says, that which I have called you to do, you will do. But draw yourself into my presence, says the Lord, like you've never done before. For I will show you agendas of my spirit and I will show you ways in a deeper thing, says the Lord. For as you are drawing into this time and in this season, says the Lord, even in the midst of challenges, says the Lord, I want to take you into a place of great healing and health of my spirit, says the Lord, and great restoration, says the Lord, and give you a new fullness of my word and give you a new fullness of my truth, says the Lord, that you shall go forth with a greater father heart and have a greater word for those that are in home, that in in, in, in devastation, says the Lord, and bring them to the Father heart of Christ. 
For the Lord says, I want to flow through you in such love and compassion. Amen. And where people are discouraged and discordant and are giving up on God because of this and this and this related to Christianity, God says, I want you to go and speak to them. Yes. I want you Amen. to speak to troubled pastors. Amen. I want you to speak to troubled nations, yes. say the Lord. God says, I have a new journey for you. God says, I have a new plan for you, says the Lord. But God says, do not be discouraged by circumstances and situations, but be drawn into my spirit, says the Lord. Be drawn into my spirit, says the Lord. For well, that shall be your comfort. That shall be your guide. Do not worry about money. Do not worry about the things. Do not worry about what the, the devil is trying to take but worry about what God is going to give worry about what God is going to restore for it's a life this is a time says the Lord what looks like a crash landing says the Lord I'm going to lift you up says the Lord I'm going to lift you up into a new height I'm going to lift you up into a time of miracles says the Lord I'm going to lift you up into a time of testimony says the Lord and you shall begin to flow in a greater revelation of my love and you shall begin to flow in a greater revelation of my height and God says you've, heard, you've been yearning in your heart for miracle signs and wonders. You've been murdering your heart for the deeper things of God. You've been praying for the miracles and you said, Lord, when is it going to be? And the Lord would say, now, son, is the season that I'm going to begin to activate that deeper calling in your life, that deeper plan in your life, that deeper provision in your life. For the Lord says, yea, many have discouraged you. Many have made you false promises and they have not delivered and you've grown discouraged and wanted to give up in the hope of the Lord. But there's always been a drawing back. There's always been a drawing back and that's a Spirit of God. It's within you, says the Lord. You'd have been a man of prayer. You've been faithful, says the Lord. And they've cl many have closed houses of religion and closed doors in your face. But the Lord says, I have not called you to be a religious vessel. I have called you to be a man of God in relationship with me, says the Lord. And God says today, there is a new freedom coming upon you. There's a time of travel. There's a time of nations. There's a time of newness. There's a time of blessing. And God says, even family members around you that have been discouraged, discordant, and have gone this way. God says, I will bring them back with cause of love in the season, say the Lord. Father, I thank you for my brother today. Lord, I thank you for your hand upon his life today. I thank you for the presence of God upon his life today. I thank you, Lord, that you're giving him strength in this season, that you're giving him strength in this day. And Lord, that he's beginning to be uplifted. He's beginning to be strengthened. He's beginning to flow in that new light. He's beginning to flow in that new love. He's beginning to flow in that new position of your glory and your truth in the name of Jesus today. We break off every discouragement. We break off every discord and we break off every uncertainty. We thank you, Lord, that his health is well. His heart is good. His back is good. He is ready for the journey, Father God. There's a renewness. There's a revigoration in this man of God today. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Can you turn with me to James 1 verse 19, please? I've got a little, I've got, I've got a little bit of scripture here this morning. I want to take you on a journey this morning. I want to take you on a journey with me this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. I've entitled the message, Living a Life That Is Truly Surrendered to Jesus Christ. Amen. Living a Life That Is Truly Surrendered to Jesus Christ. You know, when I preach, I preach the gospel. I don't preach. I don't preach facts of men. I preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because it is the gospel that sets the captive free. When we preach and when we teach, we are called to preach the word. Not to preach fairy tales. Not to preach professional standards. Not to be motivational speakers. But to impart the word of God. Because that word of God sets the captive free. And brings the motivation. And brings the, and brings the necessary correction and direction in our life. Hallelujah. We need to have a life of testimony. Like I say hallelujah. Because I was a drug addict, alcoholic. But the thing is, and God delivered me, hallelujah. But the thing is, I need, to, I need people to understand it wasn't my own strength. It was through the love of God. And it's the word of God that has sustained me through the Holy Spirit all these years of my life. And my journey with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Alright, let's go. Let's just ask God to bless the word to us this morning. Jesus, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your grace that's sufficient for us. 
and your love that is new to us every day, God. May your word, Father God, penetrate our soul this morning. And may the power of Christ be upon us and in us and work through us this morning. Jesus, we give you the honor. Bless this church for having me here today. We honor them, Lord. We bless them. And we thank you for the best for them. And we thank you for each person this morning, dear Lord, that they will receive, Father, and partake. And, Father God, run with it, Father God. And not when they leave this house, Father God, depart from it, Lord. Amen. Amen. Right, I'm going to read verse 19 and 20 because the two link up. My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For a man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Amen. Child of God, when we have a relationship with Jesus, and we are filled with the Holy Ghost of Christ, the most important thing is learning to wait on God. And to be in that place of rest with Christ. Because when we have that relationship with Him. We realize we don't have to speak a lot of words all the time. We don't have to try and do things on the spur of the moment. Because many times when you do things on the spur of the moment. It leads to desperation. It leads to frustration. And it leads to bad temperament. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when the devil has got you in a place of frustration, and he's got you in a place of bad temperament, hallelujah, he's got you of course, hallelujah, and the, the mind of Christ is not in you, the character of Christ is far from you, and questions come into your heart and into your life, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But when you learn to wait on the Lord, and you learn to enter into that place with God, you realize that you don't have to live a rigid life with Jesus. You don't have to live a life of regulations and rules. Because Christ has not called you to a life of regulations and raw laws. Hallelujah. He has called you to a life of grace and righteousness. Hallelujah. Amen. And when you have the righteousness of God inside of, you, inside of you, the fear of the Lord becomes a natural, it becomes a natural desire, but through a joy. Hallelujah. Amen. And when you have that, and you learn to wait on God. And you learn to listen. And not quick to respond. And not quick to temper. You become effective in your decisions. You become effective in your speech. You become effective as a soul winner for Jesus Christ. Amen. We go through seasons where we learn and we babble and we, and we, and we continually waffle. Because that's all part of the growth says. But a mature person that's secure in the Lord doesn't have to speak all the time. Amen. Doesn't have to be in the front line all the time. You don't have to be up there. You don't have to be a showman. Because you're secure in yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. Because Christ has not called us to compete with each other. Amen. Christ has not called us to try and run on each other's toes. Because if we know who we are in Christ... And we have a relationship with who we are in Jesus, hallelujah. We'll find ourselves in the body. And we will find ourselves, either we're going to be the nose or the mouth or the ear or the eye. We won't want to all be ears. We won't want to all be eyes. Hallelujah. We just want to be who we are in Jesus. And when we come to the house of the Lord, hallelujah, and we know who we are, we won't want to condemn each other and be compete with each other. We want to bless each other. And as we start blessing God and finding out who we are and come to the body of Christ, that will bring the unity of God's love and order. Hallelujah. And even in our everyday lives, when we make decisions and all these things, we shouldn't just run at things. Because what brings desperation is our, is our, is our way of doing things. Amen. But if we say we are born again, washed in the blood of Jesus, set free, and we keep running our head into desperation and frustration, have we really got a relationship with Jesus? Are we really building, how do we have a relationship with Jesus? Because God is not a God of confusion. God is not a God of junk shop, junk shop material. Hallelujah. Gross. He's a God of order. Hallelujah. And if we have the order of God in our lives and we are waiting on God. Hallelujah. We don't have to push. We don't have to strain. Because when the Lord goes with us. Hallelujah. He helps us and he walks with us. Hallelujah. And when we have that relationship with Jesus, we realize that it's not only Bill Johnston or Benny Hinn that has the power of God. We will realize who we are 
when we are created in God's image, that the Holy Spirit that dwells within them dwells within us too. Hallelujah. And the Word of God, and the Word of God's success is not only for big names, but it's for every believer and every child that calls upon the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now the next part of my journey is this, doing what the Word of God says. Amen. That's James 1 verses 22 to 25, okay. Okay. Do not merely listen to the Word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the Word but does not look at what it says. It's like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has done, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. Amen. Child of God, if you, go to the, if you go and look in the mirror in your physical being, and you see you need makeup, or you see you need weight reduction, and you don't do anything about it, your looking has been in vain. Mm. Yes. Now if you read the Word of God, and you have a relationship with God, and you're not putting it into practice, the book is a dead book. Amen. But if you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, and you are born again, and you are filled with God's love, and you know the, and you know the, and you know the revelation of God in your life, and you begin to read the Word of God, and you begin to allow Him to apply it in your life. Hallelujah! It becomes effective because what? what why was Abram accredited in righteousness? Because he had faith, but he did what he was told to do, and faith and deeds lead to obedience, and obedience is righteousness in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! Amen. So therefore, you can read the word of God as you like. You can pray as you like. But if you're not doing what it says, and you're not allowing God to work in it, hallelujah, you know what you're doing? You're doing nothing. It's like little Johnny going, sitting in the meadows and waiting for the cows to come home. And the cows are never going to come home because they run somewhere else. Hallelujah. So you know what? God doesn't want you to be like little Johnny in the meadow sitting under the tree waiting for the cows when the cows ain't going to come home. God wants you to be effective in the Amen. kingdom of life. Because God has not called you to be just a, God has not just called you to be a statue. He didn't come and die for statues. He didn't come and die for monuments. He came and died for people that they should be set free in the spirit of the living God. And when people get set free in the spirit of the living God, they begin to know that we are the priesthood. We are the holy royal nation. We are the priesthood of God. Hallelujah. And when Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died upon the cross, He didn't die for statues. He didn't die for monuments. He didn't die for constitutions. He didn't die for movements. He died for you and me. Because that's the church that's going to go to heaven. It's not the AOG constitution that's going to go to heaven. It's not the new life constitution that's going to go to heaven. It's the born again believer, child of God, washing the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because at the end of the day, the Lord, when He comes in revival, He's not looking at constitutions. He's not looking at institutions. He's looking at hearts of people that want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And that's you and me today in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. And what does it take? It doesn't take a lot of learning. It doesn't take a lot of Bible school. Nope. It takes a lot of heart that says, Jesus, I'm available for you. Amen. Jesus, fill me with your spirit. Amen. Jesus, I want to be born again. Jesus, I want to walk in your ways. Hallelujah. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. 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 Let's go to Isaiah 10 verse 15 while we're there. I get so excited for Jesus. Amen. Holy Ghost fire, kara kata ta ta ta. Oh, devils go, chaba chaba cha. Holy Ghost fire, pure ever baba. Lord, give us the heart of Africa. Shaba baba ba, reshende. Hey. Let's go to Isaiah 10, verse 15. Does the axe raise itself above him who swings it? Or the sword boast against him who uses it. 
as if a rod were to wield him who lifts it up, or the club brandish him who is not wood. Child of God, if you've got an axe in your hands or a saw, is it going to cut the wood or chop the wood if you don't wield it? It ain't going to do nothing. It's like you taking your toothbrush and putting it on the basin and say, teeth be brushed. <laughs> Unless you actually brush your teeth, it ain't going to happen. Amen. So it is with the word of God in your life. Amen. But what also determines the success of that, that chop or that, that saw cutting that wood is the sharpness. Hallelujah. Shabba kata Because if you want to chop wood with a blunt axe or a, or a blunt saw, hallelujah, you're going to be cutting all day. You're going to do extra work. But if you can wield that, uh, but if you can wield an axe or a saw that's well sharpened, hallelujah, and you've got the energy and you've got the, and you've got the plan of attack and the technique, hallelujah, it goes easy. Amen. So, what do we need in our lives? We don't want people that are axemen that are just going to walk around with an axe because that means nothing. We want people that are axemen that are going to chop the wood and are going to be and they're going to prepare their axe with a sharpened edge. Hallelujah! Amen. And when you know the Holy Ghost, shout by cha 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 rakata, you want to be that axe. Hallelujah! Amen. You want to be that axe that sharp. Hallelujah! Amen. So you know what? We don't have to be all spiritual. What I'm seeing in this nation, everybody wants to be intellectual. Everybody wants to run to seminars. But it's time for people to stop running to seminars and start running with what Jesus wants in their lives. Hallelujah. Amen. Because it's not the seminars, it's not the conferences that's going to save the nation. It's a born again believer washed in the blood of Jesus, praying up, hallelujah, available for God with the word in their hearts, desiring to do the things of God. Amen. The Lord is not looking for fat cats anymore. The Lord is not looking for Humpty Dumpties anymore. He doesn't need them. Hallelujah. He's looking for availability of hearts. People that have no credentials. People that have nothing but people that have available hearts. Filled with the Holy Ghost power. Amen. Amen. Filled with the Holy Ghost power. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, The last shall be first. The first shall be last. And I want to tell you, and if it comes to the push, hallelujah, the revival that's going to take place, if the Christian don't want to listen, the Lord is going to start going into the brothels. The Lord is going to start going into the pubs. The Lord is going to start going into the streets. Amen. And He's going to raise the people yeah. up. And they shall be the revivalists. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Who agrees with me? Amen. Amen. Who agrees with me? Amen. You think I'm waffling? Stand up and stone me if I'm waffling. Come, stone me. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Let's go to James. All right. Be careful of words you speak. That's the third point. Amen. All right. Let's go. With your tongue, we praise the Lord and the Father. Amen. And with it we curse men. We have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth comes praise and cursing. Amen. My brothers, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear fruits? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Child of God. If we praise in God, but yet cursing, are we born again? Do we have a relationship with Jesus? Hallelujah. Because I want to tell you, we come to church, but yet we go out and we curse our brothers. We curse and we, and we, and we become and we, and we start speaking of vulgar things and perverse things. Does that bring blessing to God? How are we really born again? Because I want to tell you something. And when we leave the house of the Lord, yeah, hallelujah, that's when we become the church. Hallelujah. And what if we are only doing it in the church? Hallelujah. We are not children of God. We are children of perdition. Hallelujah. We are children of Satan. But if we've met with the Messiah and we've met with the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, what should our hearts desire to do be, be to speak the word of God out. And when we are filled with that covenant relationship and we are in that place of rest and we are waiting on God, hallelujah, the only Amen. thing that we want to do is speak life and speak truth, hallelujah. Amen. We want to bless those that curse us. We want to speak love into their lives, hallelujah. Amen. Because our heart, our, 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 our aim, and our, our, our 
command is that we should not condemn and we should not judge. Hallelujah. We want the world to be saved. We want the world to be set free. But if we are talking rubbish out of our mouths and we are speaking hogwash and we are speaking guile and belial, how can the world be saved? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But if we are filled with the love of God and we are filled with the presence of the Lord and we know who our Father is, and we are transformed in the righteousness of the living God. As much as we sing, holy, holy is the Lamb, God Almighty. On a Sunday, when we leave this house, hallelujah, we go out there and we say, blessed be the name of Jesus. And we start speaking to people and we say, there's a potential for you in Jesus, hallelujah. And our brothers and our sisters that are falling, we begin to say, bless you, brother. Bless you, sister. May the love of God begin to shine upon you. May God bless you, hallelujah. And then God begins to move. And God begins to operate. But if we come here, shut up, 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 up. Oh, God, bless me, bless me, bless me. And we go out and sigh. And we say, you're an idiot, you're a fool, hallelujah. The blessings of God doesn't come. The damnation of hell, the damnation of hell comes against us, hallelujah. And the devil gets in. And that's where we become a divided kingdom. Yes, we can come to the house of the Lord. We can praise God. We can worship God. But yet we can be so backslidden on Monday before God. Because we are not living a right life. And I want to tell you today, and what we do in the house of the Lord, the time has come where we need to go into the highways and byways and begin to live there. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I tell you what, we are going to be challenged. Hallelujah. Amen. God has not mocked. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want to say to you today, you're going to say, brother, this, this, this. There's no more excuses, child of God. Amen. Excuses are gone. Amen. You either begin to live the life now or you get out of the plan of God. Hallelujah. Amen. But if you love God, and you seek in the prayers of God. You want to walk in the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. Amen. You want to take the gospel forward. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What does it take? Jesus. It takes a life Hallelujah. that's surrendered to Jesus. Amen. It takes a life that's open and when you're in that place. Jesus knows you're not perfect. Yes. Because I'm not perfect. The only perfect preacher you're going to see is a man named Jesus. Hallelujah. But they are pierced hands and they are pierced feet. Hallelujah. But if you're looking for men that are perfect, you're not going to find them. Hallelujah. You're going to fail. But if you're looking for one who's perfect, his name is Jesus. And he's the one that's coming back to redeem you. And this is the word that's been preached. That you should write it in your spirit. That you'll always be able to see him. Amen. So I want to tell you, on that day when the Lord comes, Many will say, Lord, Lord, in your name I prophesied. Lord, Lord, in your name I cast out your hands. And you'll say, away from me because... But they'll say, but Lord, why, why I do all these wonderful things? He said, because you do not love me. Amen. You don't love me. Well, what is love? Love is throwing the word of God. Love is standing with your brother. Love is living the life of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we living the life of Jesus? If Jesus had to come today, what, how would he find us? Will he find us in a state of grace? Will we see him? Will he embrace us? And part of our downfall is our words, mm-hmm. our lives, our deeds, our actions. Yes. And today as I'm preaching to you, I feel the inside, I feel the earnestness of God saying, get rid of filth in your lives. Get rid of moral things in your life. Get rid of moral degradation because you, you can hide from people, but you cannot hide from God. Amen. Amen. You can hide from people, but you cannot hide from God. Get rid of things in your life today. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. This is a time in this place today. While the Lord is speaking, start speaking to God. And get your life right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. Two more, two more, two more areas. Point four. God wants his children to continually mature, be blessed in all aspects of their life. And each vessel mightily used. Isaiah 54 verse 2. Enlarge your tent. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your ten curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cord. Strengthen your stakes. 
child of God, the father that we serve doesn't want us to be the same. When we have that relationship with him, and we are soaking in his presence, and we are soaking in his love, he wants us to grow up and mature. He doesn't want us to stay children on the milk of the world. He wants us to, he wants the character of God formed in us. He wants to take us to new levels. But what does it take? It takes a surrendered life. A life where you're going to make mistakes. There's going to be challenges. But a life that says, Father, I know that you're going to help me through this. And a life that desires to, to let God work in it. The day those people came to the upper room, there was a great names amongst them. There was fishermen, Peter hated man, amongst his peers in his time. A mad tax collector, a couple of prostitutes that gathered up there. It wasn't selected names, only Benny Hing or Bill Johnson or Randy Clark, no. It was people, you and me. It was you and me. They didn't have to pay $150 to go to the conference. They didn't have to pay $1,000 to sit with Benny Hinn and, 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 and ask can he have a hole on his hanky. They didn't have to do that. They met with their Messiah. They met with Jesus on a personal basis. And rather they met with a person, Jesus. But when they met with a person, Jesus, they didn't understand the Holy Spirit. But on that day, they knew the fullness of the Holy Amen. Spirit. Yes. And when the Holy Spirit stood up and they began to prophesy in other tongues and they began to prophesy, and hallelujah, it wasn't because of their names, it wasn't because of their bank education, it wasn't because of their conference build-up, hallelujah, it was because of an available heart, hallelujah. hallelujah. And they began to prophesy, yes. and they began to prophesy, yes. and the world came against them and said, you're drunk. And Peter said, they're not drunk, they're filled with the Christ whom yes. you drive, who you crucified, and the Holy Ghost has come now. Now how's revival going to come? Is it only going to come when Bill Johnson comes or Benny Hinn comes? We've got a problem there. A lot of people have to go to Israel to have a special encounter with Christ. Then Jesus is not omnipotent, hallelujah. He's Amen. only in certain places. But my Bible says he's sovereign and he's omnipotent, hallelujah. So we need to start finding the omnipotent Christ. Amen. And when we start finding that omnipotent Christ, hallelujah, we realize that that same gospel that's in Benny Hinn, Bill Johnson, and all these men of God is in you and me, hallelujah. But the only difference is they know how to tap into it and they know what to do with it. But if you are lazy and you want to be that X-man that has the X down all the time, you're not going to go anywhere. But if you have a heart that's not lazy and wants to move forward for God, there's going to be challenges and all these things. Yes. If God has to take you to this visible character, you're going to rise. Hallelujah. Amen. You're going to rise. Yes. Amen. You're going to rise. Yes. Yes. You're going to be that vessel of revival. Amen. Amen. That vessel of truth. Amen. That vessel of light. Yes. That vessel Amen. of hope in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And then my last stretch, last... My last scripture is Acts 2, verses 17 to 21. Coming revival, last revival. God wants to use this generation of believers, which is you and me, for the last revival. Who believes that? Who believes that? If you believe it, stand to your feet. Who believes that God wants to use this generation? Hallelujah. If you believe it, stand to your feet. But if you don't believe it, don't stand to your feet. Amen. Be honest with yourself. Amen. Say, this man is mad. He's got a figment of his imagination. Say, he's lost his marbles. Be truthful. But I ain't lost my marbles. I've gained them in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Sorry I'm so straightforward. But I don't mess with the things of God. Thank you, Jesus. You can love me, you can hate me, but love Jesus in me. Amen. Amen. You can stone me, but you won't kill Jesus in me. 
At least my body will leave the world then and I'll come be with Jesus sooner. The sooner the better. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Yes. All right. Sit down. After this, we're going to do some declarations. Because I believe the Lord's going to unlock things in the spirit here today. Amen. Who can feel the word of God challenging their hearts here today? Amen. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Amen. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. Amen. I will show wonders in the heaven and signs on the earth below blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. Before the coming of the Lord, before the coming of the great day and glorious day of the Lord. And anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Child of God, does that only say certain people? No. If we take the message of the cross, in Him there is no condemnation, that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes. Amen. Then when He says, go and preach the word, Baptizing them in the Father, Son, and the name of the Holy Ghost. Cast out devils, pray for the sick. Does he only say it's only for certain people? No. Or does he say it's for every believer? Every believer. So now today, if we have the Word of God in us, and we understand the Holy Spirit, can we not all prophesy? Can we not all prophesy? Not everybody will have the office of a prophet. But everybody says can prophesy because the word of God says desire to prophesy. Yes, amen. Amen. Young men will see visions. Mm. Old men will dream dreams. Mm. Is that only for certain young men? No. Is it only for certain old men to dream dreams? No. no. It's for every believer. Yes, amen. Now, you've got the axe in your hand today. Do you just want it to be a monument or an ornament? Or do you want it to become an active tool? What do you want? And the Bible says about darkened days and all that. So the revival that's coming is not easy times. When the first testimony church was formed, it wasn't in easy times. It was hard times. But this time it's going to get harder. And the state of the nation as is because the church of Jesus Christ is not right. So who is going to bring righteousness into this nation? Is it the AOG constitution? No. Is it the new life constitution? No. Is it Pastor Nikki's constitution? No. Is it Kevin's constitution? No. no. It's the people of God full of the Holy Spirit Hallelujah. available Amen. for them. Yes. So who believes that God is going to visit the way he did in the book of Acts for revival. Yes. Who believes that the church of Jesus Christ is doing the right things at the moment by having all these conferences all the time and nothing happening? Who believes that they're doing the right thing? Because I would say, I would say that if they were doing all the right things, revival should have happened Amen. already. Yes, that's right. So what do we need? We need a change of thought pattern. We need a change of revelation. And where is it? Is it something that we have to wait on God for? No. It is written. Amen. Amen. Houses of prayer, houses of worship, waiting on the Lord. Yes. And do you believe it can happen in this house here? Yes. yes. Do you believe it can only happen at new, at big new life church? No. Paul de Jong's church or no. Brent, Brent Douglas' church because they better equipped. Do you believe it can only happen there? No. Does the word of God not say that it takes the oppressed? And the lowly and raises them up. Hallelujah. So what do you need here? Do you have to get Benny Hinn before it can happen? Do you have to get Randy Clark in before it can happen? Or can we just get the Holy Ghost in as we are and it can happen? Hallelujah. So who believes that God wants to do something here? Amen. Let's stand up. Let's pray. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Sister Ivani, I just want to say be encouraged. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The Lord your God is with you. Amen. Yes.
You've got the bonds on your shoulders, you've got the bounds, you've got the shackles, and you've got the despair. But the Lord will turn your mourning into joy. Amen. The next three days, there's victory coming for you. There's release coming for you. Amen. There's the favor of God and the grace of God coming upon your health, upon your finances, upon things that are against you. There's release coming. Next week, you'll give me a testimony that God has worked in this situation. Let's lift up our hands. Let's begin to pray. Let's begin to praise God. I'm just going to be praying this morning for activation now. Amen. I'm going to be praying now. Back problems in the name of Jesus be healed. Leg problems in the name of Jesus be healed. Sugar diabetes in the name of Jesus be healed. Blood pressure in the name of Jesus be healed. Depression in the name of Jesus be healed. Financial, financial hopelessness in the name of Jesus be adjusted right now. People that have no jobs, you have jobs right now in the name of Jesus. Every other bit of sickness is going. Every other bit of mind binding is going right now. And let's just begin to praise God. Lift up your hands. I'm going to begin to pray. Father God, you've spoken through your word this morning. You have spoken by the Holy Ghost this morning, Almighty God. And Father God, today, Lord, there's a stirring in this house taking place right now in the name of Jesus. There's a power of your Holy Spirit coming upon this house today. And Father God, there is a newness of the wind beginning to blow, Father God. And I thank you, Jesus, today that the word that you have said, that those that wait upon you, Father God, they shall know you, Lord God. And I thank you today, Jesus, that you're beginning to pour out your spirit in this house. That you're beginning to anoint these people, God. That you're beginning to minister the word of God. That you're beginning to lift up people in this house today. That there is a new journey coming, Father. And where there's been discouragement and hopelessness and Father God striking that the breakthrough is coming. And this will be a lighthouse in the nation. This will be a ministry to nations. You're going to send our teams to many nations from you. Shabaraka shende rebe beru babara babara katanda. Sika tende laba shende rebe shende kuta. My brother. Lord says you will be a pillar of light and a pillar of salt and a father to nations and to people. And God says you've been discouraged, you've been downhearted, but there's a word in you, there's a word of evangelism in you. And these hands shall be used for miracle signs and wonders. And God has taken you into a new depth. You've had a lot of discouragement, you've had a lot of discouragement, but the Lord's about to change your seasons. God's about to change your ways of fortune. So get ready for a new season in your life. And I just see the glory cloud of God falling upon this house right now. I just believe that the Lord is saying to me that this really needs to be a time of prayer in this house. A time of waiting on God. A time of seeking God. And as you begin to do that, the Lord is going to begin to activate the new things, the sovereignty. I see financial blessing coming into this house. I see, I see blessing coming into this house. I see business people being added to this house. I see restoration in this house. I see healing in this house. I see the hope of God in this house. And I see people right now that have got demonic influence and strongholds in their life. As you hold on to God now, the fire of God is yet. You can ask God to purge you, set you free, and God will do it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you.
Amen. And all the words that He had given us yes, today, yes. Lord Jesus. Let us make that rooted in our hearts, my Father. Amen. Allow us, Lord Jesus, to open our hearts as we have heard today. You will come and seek those with an open heart to you. Father, let us open our hearts and allow you to live inside us, Lord Jesus. So that whatever we do, whatever we say, people don't see us as who we are, but they will see Christ in our lives. Father, I pray that you bless him abundantly, Lord God. Look after him and protect him, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray for each and every one of your of your church of your church here today, Lord Jesus. This family, Father, I pray that you bless each and every one of us, from our children to the adults, Lord Jesus, and our youth. Father, I also pray for the uh, food that we are about to share, Lord Jesus. Bless the hands that has been given, Lord Father, and prepare the food for us, Lord Jesus. Father, we want to give you back all the honor and all the glory. Because you deserve it all in Jesus' name, I pray. And all God's people say, Amen. All God's people say, Amen. Amen. May God bless you.